Greetings from the University of Montana. I'm Bob Ledbetter, Director of Percussion Studies here at U of M. Uh, and I'm here today to demonstrate the uh, all, -star, all state uh, audition materials for 2021. Um, and I hope to also share with you some uh, pointers on playing percussion in general. Um, we're gonna start with timpani. Um, the first requirement is playing the F major scale using two drums at quarter note equals 80. Um, one thing I'll tell you about that is um, practice on your own drums uh, and get used to the feel of the pedal for a half step and for a whole step. The other thing you'll notice is that the closer you get to the, to the top of the pedal where it's more tension on the head, there's more resistance. So be aware of that when you're, um, especially on the top drum, that your F is the very top range of your 26 inch drum. Um, the stroke that you play with, first of all, I would recommend like some medium or general mallets. Um, and the stroke that I teach um, most timpanists use is a upstroke or a piston stroke. And the best way to describe that is to um, make sure the stick comes back where it started uh, on each stroke. So before the next one goes down, the first one must come up. Where you have to be careful that you're not shifting into playing down into the head. You always want to try to get off the head quickly. Um, the other thing is the louder you play, the more important that is. So if you're playing forte, fortissimo, you have to then use what's called the velocity stroke, like really get the stick up quickly. You can start higher, but you're going to use more speed in the stroke for louder playing rather than downward force. That's how you get a bad sound on timpani. Most drums actually, downward force is not good. Uh, only to a limited degree does that sound good and then it starts you know, sounding pretty bad. So timpani, always work on getting your sound uh, stick off the, the drum as quick as possible. Okay, so here goes the uh, F major scale. So um, put your feet, now first of all, you might notice that I'm sitting on a stool. Um, a lot of timpanists sit on a stool, and the reason for that is not because they're lazy, it's because it helps them uh, rotate around the drums. It also, we can't raise the drum like we can on the snare drum to our proper playing height. So especially if you're about my height, I'm about 5'10", um, I can lower myself down to the proper playing angle to the drum. Otherwise, I'm standing too high and the sticks come at a bad angle. The other good reason is what I'm using for using the, the uh, stool right now is to help me uh, keep both feet on the pedals while I'm playing this, okay? Just a suggestion, so any kind of stool will work as long as it's about high enough. This is a nice rock and sock timpani throne that uh, is adjustable height, so nice to get something like that uh, if you can. Okay, so here it goes. Uh, four note equals 80. One, two, ready, go. step occurs between the A and the B flat. Watch out, don't overshoot that one. And then at the very top, the E to the F is another half step. So be careful from the It's not very far. These timpani have gauges on them, um, which I was tr purposely not using because you should try to do it by ear and by feel. Okay, so now the, the um, etude number four page 13, um, two note, two uh, pitches G and D. Perfect fifth. Okay. Okay, on this one, we're in 5-4 time, quarter note equals 96. Um, on your rolls, kind of keep a loose grip. so you get less contact sound, and then maybe a tighter grip on the other notes. Um, let's see. 
So I've already talked about the stroke. Um, you have some sticking issues in here. So if you have triplets, uh, a, a single triplet, um, I marked in my stickings here to make sure I uh, got that correct. So if you're playing a triplet going up, then I'm going to start with the left hand, so the end on the right. If I'm doing the opposite, I'm going to start with the right to go down. Okay. If it's four notes, sixteenth notes, then I'm going to start with the right if I'm going up. And if I'm going down, I'm going to start with the left. The other thing you might notice me doing is dampening um, from when I'm hitting a new drum, I'll dampen the previous drum. It's called clarity dampening. So that you don't hear the first drum ringing. If, uh, that's a great thing to add to your playing if you can. Um, so right in the stickings, uh, I recommend that. Also, anything else that's going to help you, like those long rolls and the fourth line, you have four beat or well, three beat rolls tied to count five. Um, just write the beats over there so you don't lose count. Um, dampen and rest if you can. Um, and that's about it. Um, so here goes the etude. Let me see what 96 is. It is important that you try to play these, if you're being adjudicated on this, that you, you know, close the tempo as, fa as possible. Faster than possible than the written tempo is not always the right thing to do. So, you know, when an audition requires a certain tempo, then try to go with that exact tempo as best you can. Not very fast. Here we go. Loose grip on rolls. Okay, so now we're uh, we're going to talk about mallets. Um, so this piece is in uh, seven eight, challenging rhythmically, um, and uh, basically seven eight. All music can be divided into twos and threes, and this one is mostly in three two one two three one two one two. So it helps to think of it that way. Then one two three four five six seven. Um, there are a couple of bars though where it's actually. Um, Two, three, two, and that's bars three and nineteen, um, which make it a little tri tricky coming into that roll there. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, one. Um, make sure your rolls are the right length. They're usually um, one, two off or one, two, three off. There is one roll that's a half note, or, or actually, you know, two uh, groups of two. Um, also, of course, make sure you keep maintain the key of A throughout. So all accident, all you know, the three sharps uh, stay throughout the bar. Lots of accidentals here. Remember that the accidental stays throughout the bar um, and is only canceled when you get to the next bar. Um, okay, rolls. Make sure your rolls um, end cleanly um, and on the proper beat. Notice the uh, double sharps uh, in bar. I think it's bar 14. Um, that's basically the same. A C double sharp is the same as a D natural. So very dissonant half, half step there. Um, so watch the accidentals throughout. Um, and then, of course, the next to last bar has a C sharp uh, where it has been a C before. So watch for that C sharp. Um, also, del uh, stickings. So I wrote in some of my own stickings here that seem to work good for me. I noticed that the threes all the groups of three, I, I either did right, left, left, I'm sorry, left, right, right most of the time, um, but not always. I noticed the first bar works better for me to go left, right, right on the, the threes there. 
So, um, but you definitely can't alternate throughout. So you're gonna have to use double strokes um, to make this uh, flow. Try to bring out the accents as well. There's some accents in there. Make sure you bring those out. I recommend writing in your stickings um, to make it as uh, um, effective and flowing as, as get as much flow as possible. So this one is at 126. Okay. All right, I'm gonna lower this down so you can see what I'm doing better. to a snare drum, uh, snare drum uh, excerpt, and um, <clears throat> also there's the um, pianissimo to fortissimo and back to pianissimo uh, buzz roll, as well as the double stroke roll, open to close to open. Um, <clears throat> so let me just start with the buzz roll. Um, my recommendation is to uh, count in your mind about 16 counts to do the whole thing. Uh, try to stay at the fortissimo level for about four beats before you drop back down. Um, also, um, in terms of playing good buzz roll, uh, just some pointers here. Um, one thing to work on is the soft end of the buzz roll. Um, See how long you get the stick to bounce, and then see if you can overlap, leaving one down when the next one starts. So you get this overlap. <clears throat> uh, most orchestral drummers uh, in professional orchestras um, play using a three-point grip, thumb, index, and middle finger, which has been called the orchestral grip. So the last two fingers, the pinky and the ring finger, really don't touch the stick, um, especially in rolls. Uh, so you might try that if you haven't done that before. Uh, the other thing that I do when I'm playing really soft, as do many players, is they drop to the tips of your fingertips for the soft playing. So you have kind of an opening here in the hand, uh, which gives you a little bit better finesse for softer playing. So, and also I'm trying not to let the back of the stick hit my hand too much until I start getting louder. Um, as you get louder, the other thing I recommend is, is using a slower uh, rolls, um, what we call uh, roll bass. So I'm gonna start with triplets, da, 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 like this. That's the basis of my roll. And as I get louder, I'll speed up to 16th and possibly even faster than that. Um, and then when I come back down in dynamic, I slow down my roll bass to triplets again. Um, not too fast, because you're trying to get more buzzes per stick here um, when you're playing soft. More buzzes per stick and then a slower roll bass. When you get louder, then you're playing faster, therefore, and you're also playing higher. So there's less time for the stick to be on the head, which means then you have uh, less time to do more buzzes, therefore, there'll be less buzzes, you're gonna move st faster then. Um, so here's um, my version of the pianissimo to fortissimo and back down to pianissimo buzz roll. Also start on the edge and then work towards the center for the loud part, back to the edge for the soft, for the soft part. I'm thinking like one, two, three, four. <laughs> For the double stroke roll, um, 
what happens in the double stroke roll, of course the dynamics don't matter here, um, just play like a mezzo forte. Um, what you want to do here to prepare for this is see how fast you can get the double going without using rebound. So a good way to work on that is play double strokes on your leg or a chair or the a pillow, something that doesn't have any rebound and therefore you develop this, the speed in your wrist. You know what you can do in the back of the band room when you, when the, the you know when percussion is not being called upon. Um, I know a lot of drivers sit back in the back and you know do something like this. This is a good thing to work on. Doesn't make much sound, and getting that good double stroke without using rebound is a really good uh, technique builder. So then um, when you're starting slow, you're fine, and then you get as fast as you can without any rebound, and then shift over to a slow bounce and then go from there to the, keep closing it to where it's as um, fast as you can play it. Uh, don't go so fast that it turns into a buzz roll though, so make sure you're always um, keeping that double all the way through. Um, so for instance, right here, that's without rebound, that's just my wrists. Now I'm gonna do the same speed with rebound. And now without rebound. So work on that, trend. then we make the transition from not bounce to bounce strokes. It's a much smoother um, process. Here we go. down out of it don't take forever um, to come out of it um, what you've already what you're trying to prove has already been proven at that point um, also when you get playing the faster part of the double it's okay to use some arm there to help um, with the double use a little bit of forearm it'll help get that double even cleaner uh, give you a little bit of um, uh, more ability to squeeze on the fulcrum here to get a good double stroke Okay, so now the uh, playing etude is number 11 on page 10. This one has a couple of typos in it. The first one is the uh, count three of the second measure. Um, that should be eighth, sixteenth, sixteenth, um, sixteenth rest, and then a sixteenth note. So exactly the same as beat three of the first measure. Should be just like that. And the fourth measure on the count three, you have a roll um, that roll should be tied to count uh, two of that grouping. Um, so the ties you notice is on the wrong spot. So um, it should be the same tie as the first two beats of that measure. Okay. All right. Now, so on this one, the tempo is challenging because it's pretty slow. Um, so be careful about rushing. Uh, make sure you practice with the metronome. You might want to set the metronome at the eighth note um, when you're learning this. Um, also, the rolls, it's important that you have rolls that have a very clear roll base or rhythm, underlying rhythm. Um, so for instance, that first roll in the, on uh, the end of, well, big beat one, the first measure, I'm doing that as a triplet. Da, 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 da. So, da, 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 da. That's good because I'm playing softer. I'm, I'm trying to keep my sticks not from going too fast there so I can get more but, uh, bounces per stick. Ta, 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 ta. And then the end of that measure, I do six strokes or a six tuplet in the, that quarter note roll at the end of that measure. The second line is up to mezzo forte now. So then all the rolls there, I use uh, four 30 second notes as the roll base. So the roll base for that um, measure beginning of the second line would be that kind of thing. Okay. Um, also, you know, you're trying to find a roll that sounds good at that particular tempo, a roll base that sounds good at that tempo. Next, you have uh, these crescendo rolls down the halfway down. I'm putting those, I'm using six tuplets for those because they start soft and then crescendo. Um, and I'm trying to start and end each roll with the right hand. Um, so I do six tuplets there. Um, 
that's about it. And, and otherwise, sticking, you know, sticking issues, um, I stick with kind of a right-hand lead approach. Um, those triplets uh, are the triplets uh, are going to end on the left hand if you start with the right. So be aware of that. And you might want to write in stickings in a few places that'll help make make this um, uh, better for you. The one rhythm that occurs a few times, um, this one. Uh, I just do right, right, left, left, right on those, which is basically right hand lead. So uh, tempo on this one, pretty slow. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So be careful about rushing. Here we go. bar. I'm going to do one more on that. percussion, um, including snare drum, tambourine, triangle, cymbals, and bass drum. Uh, there's some challenging sections in here, uh, especially the tambourine and uh, snare drum in a couple of places. Um, let's look at the snare drum stuff first. Um, forte piano crescendos, um, typically a good way to do that is to strike the forte on the drum in the middle and then have your left hand on the edge for the piano. Uh, these are all buzz rolls, of course. So uh, an attack forte without a roll, without rolling that. So you don't you don't buzz it. You just play an accent. There, that's one way to do it. Another way is to actually play a buzz. So either way is good. Um, you can make your choice there how you like to do that. Conductors sometimes want one or the other. Uh, then the second line is where you have the first technical, major technical tricky thing to have to deal with, which is playing a drag on the downbeat of the 5-8 bar following the 16th notes. And so um, my the way I came up with the solution for that is on count four of that bar, the pianissimo bar, I play a paradiddle, right, left, right, right, um, which means then I have to play one more right on the downbeat of the 5-8 bar, which is tricky. Uh, so you might practice that just a few times. 
Why am I doing that? That's giving me time to get my left hand in there to get that grace note in there. So if I did it slowly, it'll be right, left, right, right, and the drag comes in that left hand right before the downbeat. So it allows you enough time to get a grace, grace note in there, otherwise you just can't do it. So getting out the tempo is tricky. Um, I'll start that again. So that's something to practice a lot there. Uh, right? It's a little bit louder, which is good because then it, uh, because you're having to squeeze that in there, it's going to jump up in volume anyway. Okay. Uh, then the rest of the snare drum stuff is pretty straightforward. Um, of course, all buzz rolls. Okay, next up, um, tambourine issues. So the tambourine, first of all, should be a good, a typical like 10 inch tambourine, double row of jingles uh, with a head on it. Uh, any other kind of tambourine is not gonna work for this. Um, also, it's highly recommended that you get some beeswax um, to just rub some beeswax on the area where you're gonna play the thumb rolls. Okay, so, and then, um, then uh, a little bit on your finger helps a little bit too. Uh, so thumb rolls, uh, typically, first of all, when you play the tambourine, you always hold it at 45 most of the time with your, if you're holding it uh, for most playing situations, including thumb rolls. So what I'm gonna do for thumb roll is, um, I like to think of uh, like balancing a basketball or something on the tip of my, fin my thumb, pointing it up like that, getting my fingers out of the way like that. And then basically it's gonna follow around the edge of the tambourine on the outside edge. I'm right-handed, but I play left-handed tambourine. Um, you're, you know, if you're right-handed, you might find more success playing thumb rolls with your right hand. I've just always done it left-handed. Uh, it helps to put a little bit of moisture on your fingertip, and then keeping that stiff thumb and the fingers out of the way, you start with an attack and then push around, imagining your thumbnail as being like the windshield of a car going around a roundabout the wrong direction, okay? Okay? Now, the thumb roll stuff in here is very soft, so you're not gonna, admit, you're not gonna need to go very far around the head to get that, because if you go too far, you're gonna be, it's gonna be louder, like that. So if you're gonna go only uh, maybe half that distance for that first roll, right? And then, and then the eighth note rolls are just maybe that, that long. Okay, try to make sure that they, the release of each roll stops, uh, the, just stop the thumb, like that. Then you have a thick shake roll right at the end. Start the shake roll uh, with an attack. Hold the tambourine like this when you're doing the shake roll and then gradually lift it for the crescendo and then end with a, an attack in the middle. Okay, now before that though, we have another issue is playing those triplets at the, in the first measure, 16th note triplets. You never use sticks on a tambourine, so the proper way to do this is to, I have a chair sitting right here. So I put the chair here just for the purpose of playing the tambourine. So what I'm gonna do is, um, I have the tambourine sitting on this tray stand here, upside down. So at the beginning of the piece, I already have it set like that. When it's time for tambourine, I put my leg on the chair, grab it. You have to have the tambourine upside down to do this. Basically, you're going to strike with your hand on the inside of the tambourine and then hit your knee, preferably your kneecap, with the, with, the, with the head of the tambourine on the other side. So it ends up being like this. I'm going to... so, so practice that a bunch of times to where you feel comfortable with that. All right, the next problem comes up in the next measure when you have upbeats, and you have to get the tambourine back over like this for the thumb rolls. So uh, one of the problems with playing tambourine is when you turn it over, it makes a sound, right? So how are you gonna get around that? So what I did was I play the, the triplets, and then on the beginning of the next measure with the upbeats, I start with an attack underneath the tambourine, and while I do that, I flip the tambourine like that. So for that measure. Then your tambourine's back in the head up position for the rest of the, that, that section of the piece, okay? Next up, and then set the tambourine back on the stand. You should have a carpet on the stand where I have, that's where I have my drumsticks, my triangle beater and triangle, um, 
and then uh, the tambourine there. I have another little tray table for the cymbals. I have a tray table right here for the bass drum mallets because I have to make that quick change. Um, and uh, so let's see, the next thing is triangle. So triangle, you need to pick, it should be, um, you know, suspended with a clamp, like a number one clamp you can get in your hardware store. And then fishing line works really well. I use pretty, I think I have eight pound test here or something like that. Uh, pretty thick uh, fishing line. And I, I actually put two loops just in case one breaks. Then I hold the, the clamp with the, with the thumb on one side, index on the other, which leaves my other fingers free to dampen. Um, play the triangle uh, with a uh, beater at a 45 degree angle so you get all the overtones. Okay. When you play a roll, simply lift the beater up to the top of the triangle, you know, in that top corner, and then just go back and forth. I like to use what we call French grip like this because I play this way and when I roll, I use my natural wrist motion to roll. So ding, ding, ding for strikes this way, for rolls this way. So, okay, the other thing, you have these little grace notes in there, so there's only one measure of them. Normally, if I had grace notes, I'd, I'd put the triangle on the stand and use two beaters, but because it's only one measure, you can do it carefully by just going back and forth on the very top, like that. So just be careful about that, not to get too loud there. Okay, and then that's uh, at the end of that section. Um, move on to bass drum. Um, let me do cymbals first. Cymbals, um, I, I have 17 inch uh, Zildjian classic orchestral, really like these cymbals. Uh, I have smaller cymbals, I mean 18 to be okay too, but that first measure is pretty fast. Um, so a smaller cymbal is better if you can get it, if you have one. Um, so two things you need to pay attention to on cymbals. Um, that is, first of all, you don't need to put your hands in the straps. That takes forever, and it's not necessary concert uh, concert cymbal playing, only marching really. Um, so then the two things you need to really pay attention to is making sure your edges do not line up. Okay. So for a mezzo forte, it's about like that, and the louder you get, the further down your angle the, the, the alignment is. The other thing you have to watch for is the angle of the cymbal. So the louder the cymbal, the cymbal crash, the more angle you have between the two uh, cymbals. So you'll notice at the end, when I switch from the, the crescendo there, the forte and the fortissimo, I'll gradually increase the angle. And that does mean that the top's gonna hit first, but you should have that kind of a flam effect when the cymbals crash together. The first line I play, I don't worry so much about angle, but I do make sure my alignment is off so that I don't get any vacuums and I get a good, good cymbal sound, okay? Um, so. 